You, in, in, at one, in one very serious interview, you said, whether I fill the characters with my life or fill my life with the characters, that's unclear to me. Yeah. So, it, so that's, to me, that shows that you really lost yourself somewhat in the, oh, those you, characters. Yes, I, I mean, that yes, is tempting absolutely. the gods if you're well, concerned with really. losing I mean, your sanity. One doesn't have the equipment at that age to know if you're tempting the gods or, or, or otherwise. I think that you just flow with what you feel is a very energetic life river of energy and excitement, you know, and uh, uh, I put myself in a situation where I really didn't know what the boundaries were and what the fine line was between my characters on stage and my, and my absolute uh, self. Um, and uh, and that's, that's something that really I never really came to terms with until the late 70s, and in the late 70s it, I started to redefine exactly who I was by readjusting my life and taking myself out of a, a, a kind of a pretty fast lane existence. Did you, in a way, like Lou Reed puts it, uh, do a little of growing up in public with your pants down? Uh, rarely with my pants down. <laughs> and I'm not sure about growing up. I hope that I never fully grow up. No, I, I don't think... <laughs> no, I haven't grown up, believe me. <laughs> Do you resemble your father? Um, physically, yeah, well, yeah, I think I'm pretty much, oh, I guess, uh, 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 amalgam between my mother and my father, and, and like both, I suppose, I guess. I don't know. I don't know. I haven't thought about it, really. What sort of a man was he? A, uh, the typical polite English gentleman? Yes, I think he probably was. He, uh, he was a very decent man. Um, I think if uh, I inherited anything from him at all, uh, it was uh, maybe a love of books. Um, he was an avid reader. And, uh, um, and that was one thing I think probably that did more for me than anything else that I've ever applied myself to in life is that I became a voracious reader. And to this day, I mean, it still gives me uh, the most extraordinary pleasure. Uh, I can't, I couldn't possibly tell you how fantastic it is just to just become fully involved in the thinking and the ideas and the location of somebody else's mind. I mean, I guess that's why I want to write, you know. <laughs> Did your father ever tell you when you went into music you're doing the right thing? I believe in it. Yes, I mean, I, I, I hope that I would pass that on to my son. Is that it, he, he made it very clear that my choices were mine uh, as of a certain age. Uh, uh, and that whatever gave me, he, was ne he never pressed me into uh, thinking of financial stability as being something to particularly strive for. That it, for me it was uh, a much more a case of what is it that you really feel will make each and every day something to look back on and say that was really good. Was he that you know? kind of man for himself as well? Yes he was, yeah. Was he a successful yeah. man? Um, yes he was a successful man. Uh, financially, no, not at all. But as a person he was uh, he worked for a, a, children, a charity in England called Dr. Bernardo's, Dr. Bernardo's Homes. Um, and uh, that's something that gave him uh, terrific satisfaction. Would you call him an outsider in his days? No? no? He really. belonged to a group? Um, belonged to a group? No. I don't think any of my family ever belonged to groups. We're not group people. We tend to be quite sort of uh, very self-sufficient people. Give us a book and a paintbrush, and we don't really need anything. <laughs> <laughs> what about your own f f uh, fatherhood, if I may ask? How did you do it? How, how, you were a single parent for, I, I don't know how many years. How can you be um, a single parent and, and, and play in plays, uh, act in plays? And I have absolutely on? no idea. You'd have to ask my son. Um, um, I believe that we had uh, always a very strong relationship. Uh, I don't know. There's no rule book to go by. I mean, uh, he turned out to be uh, a really charming, bright, lovely young man. I mean, he's, he's, uh, he's a good kid. <laughs> he's no longer a kid. He's 24 years old. Mm. Still studying. If they're seven, he's still studying? Yeah. What is he studying? He's taking his doctorate in philosophy at the moment. Yes! Yes! <laughs> <laughs> Is that what you want to do? Is that what you want to do? Yes? Yeah. Why would you want to uh, study philosophy? <laughs> I asked my son the same question. I have absolutely. Because, uh, 
because it gives you the possibility to look at uh, one thing in different ways. Yes, no, I, I agree, I understand, I agree with you. <laughs> but now you, you <laughs> must... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but no, she's quite, she's quite right. I think that's why one is drawn to uh, uh, understanding how other people think and, and where, they, where they come from or where they're going, where they've been through their lives, is that when you're stuck with a set of absolute, absolutes when you're a kid, I think, uh, you know, you go to this kind of church, you do that kind of thing, and you think this way, um, if you have any sense of imagination, I think that you fall out fairly quickly with absolutes and, and you, you want to see as wide a divide, as many avenues as are possible in life. And, and I think, for me, uh, for my part, I, I got to a place where I saw that I could pick bits and pieces of each of those avenues. It's not essential to take one avenue as the gospel, that, that no one man is right about anything.